Jason Goes to Hell. Media order and welcome to my Friday the 13th franchise reviews. Let's continue with Friday the 13th part 7, Jason Takes Manhattan. Why did you break up the So this film was released in 1989, it's the last movie to be released by Paramount due to the box office decline when the film was released. Uh, they sent the rights over to New Line Cinema, which of course screwed it up with Jason Goes to Hell. But they did give us Freddy vs Jason, which did redeem the series. But uh, yeah, this is the last official movie by Paramount, and you can see why after watching this movie. Oh dear. So the storyline follows a bunch of campus like graduate students that go on a trip to New York. Jason decides to tag along and starts killing people, doing what he does best. That's about it really, there's nothing really else apart from that, in all fairness. Yeah, seriously, who wrote this movie? Yeah, that explains a lot. So the opening of this movie, we have a slutty couple on top of a boat uh, near Camp Crystal Lake. We see Jason under the water next to a power cord, which conveniently enough gets cut in half, which reanimates his body like in part five. And of course he rises back up and he starts, you know, killing people on the boat. Um, the one thing that really uh, annoyed me about the opening and insulting pretty much was just how much convenient stuff was in, like the power cord was conveniently right next to Jason so he can be reanimated, uh, the masks, the weaponry, just a lot of stuff in that opening 10 minutes is just like, oh, it's just, it's bad for a Friday the 13th movie, big time. I mean, the slutty couple, I mean, the guy was talking about, okay, we're near, we're near Camp Crystal Lake, and I love, I love the fact that he just, he's talking to his girlfriend, he's saying, uh, he's basically his girlfriend saying, come on, tell me, tell me what happened. He's going, nah, nah, it's silly, it's silly. Then he tells her, super seriously, like, you know, Jason, you know, you can't kill him. He killed everybody that, you know, come, come to Camp Crystal Lake. And then, you know, after, like, a very serious monologue, he goes, nah, forget about it, forget about it. Let's go back to having sex, yay. And it's like, you know, you're just set, setting it up and spoon-feeding for people that haven't actually watch the actual previous movies and let's just say about the opening of the movie also usually when typical Friday the 13th movies they have like a typical uh, first kill death and they have like the actual main title it's always been the same for all the movies this one they tried to change it and actually show scenery locations actual New York with this kind of you know 80s um, inappropriate music and just say it, it, it looks like a sitcom opening a, a, a very typical uh, sitcom opening or thriller or something just it did not look or feel like a Friday the 13th you know it just comes up Friday the 13th Jason takes Manhattan show the scene show the locations where we're going to be coming in later on and it's like okay this is not a Friday the 13th opening it just takes away completely what the others were no tension build up no suspense uh, the actual boyfriend decides to put a plank on his girlfriend by wearing the exact replica Jason mask with the actual same marks and damages and rough marks on the mask. Conveniently, so Jason gonna have a mask again as he got destroyed within part six. And then of course he kills the boyfriend by a spear and then insultingly when he kills the actual girl he gets basically a stick with a pointy end on it and he slowly goes down into it and it's like okay woman move jump tap whatever you know you can actually move you know you, she could have actually jumped into the water one for help but no she decides to stand there and scream her head off while he's slowly going down it's bad it's really really bad the actual tone of this movie feels like more of a black comedy with horror elements than it actually is a horror actual movie, which is a huge shame for this movie to go into. But in all fairness, some of the deaths in this movie, some of the actual things that happen, is absolutely fucking hilarious. I was laughing at more of the deaths, more of the actual things, and the character moments in this movie than I did the previous ones. It's just laughably bad, and I think the director and the writer of this movie deliberately did it. He must have done it. There's no freaking way he made this movie intentionally making a horror movie. Later on in the movie we get to see our graduate students going onto the actual world, kind of like a navy boat ship in a sense, and Jason for some reason decides to tag along for whatever reason, I don't really understand, being the fact that the, the previous movies have always stated that Jason kills anybody that messes with him on his own turf, campus or like, so his own graveside, that means he doesn't want people to come there, and for some reason he's going after campus like graduate students that did nothing to him personally, and he's willing to just tag along and kill everybody on there for no reason whatsoever. 
Oh, well, yeah, because the script says so, that's why, yeah. Okay, so the actual characters in the movie, we got our typical uh, love interest, we got our main female protagonist character, which I usually like seeing with Friday the 13th movies, but this one was the most weakest, most half-assed, laziest uh, developed characters I've seen. They give us some connection with, the, you know, Jason, um, being the fact that they keep mentioning throughout the entire movie that Jason's uh, younger version self, being the fact he kept drowning Camp Crystal Lake, and she's a phobia of going into the water of drowning because he saw Jason, apparently, while she was younger, pulling her down, that's about it. And throughout the entire movie, she had this weird kind of mental, uh, you know, flashes of keep seeing Jason, younger version of him, and they grind on that so freaking much throughout the entire movie. Throughout the start of the movie to the end of the movie, they do it throughout the entire thing, and it's like, yes, we get it, she's traumatized, moving on kind of thing, you know, it just, it doesn't serve any purpose to the actual movie, it's the fact that they were just revealing more stuff to the audience that we already know. The one thing I will give a credit for is the fact that we do link a bit more into Jason, uh, fear of you know drowning and the whole thing of that, and that does link into the final act of the actual movie. But there's one continuity of that that I picked upon while watching that last uh, segment. There's a scene in the actual movie where the actual survivors of the actual boat manage to get to New York, they dock upon a local uh, area and uh, the survivors come walking and you know, start walking trying to find help police officers and Jason at the exact moment peers up from beyond the water you know he's basically swam from the boat all the way to New York to basically track him down and still kill him okay and at the end of the movie yeah uh, it's stated that he's got a huge fear of the water he does not like being underwater because of drowning but yet he can swim all the way from the boat to New York no problem whatsoever um, I thought the whole point of his character was the whole fact that he was as a phobia of drowning, a phobia of not being able to swim. They stated in the movie too many times that Jason Voice could not swim, and yet when he's well, I mean, he's basically a walking zombie, he can do. Wrong! So yeah, the actual survival girl is just bleh, in a sense, just really boring. I don't root for her. I don't care for her. The love interest again, I didn't care for it. Didn't care for him. Just characters there, just for stereotypes, just to get killed. Some of them are just for the body count, some of them are just uh, to be, what, the grumpy old guy that says, no, Jason Voorhees is not real, you're, you're imagining making things up kind of thing, you know. The typical character that does not believe anything. You even got the old guy character that's saying, the ship is doomed, doomed. The only thing I'm going to give this movie credit for, which is going to be the biggest thing I'm going to praise this movie for, is the budget. Obviously, Paramount gave a lot of money for, to the actual director to make this movie big and, and shiny and looking good. The set design was good, the ship location was good, New York uh, cinematography was good. I love some of those fantastic little shots of Jason being menacing, looks pretty awesome. But that's it. Production value, I would give it uh, a good thumbs up, but everything else apart from it was not focused on. It was just focusing on the location. Jason, I felt, was weak and a bit comedic in times. I didn't think he was that menacing in all fairness. I felt Kane Harder came back again to do the role, but I didn't think he did a particularly best job. Um, I felt, well, not, not no disregard to him. I think it was the writing. I think it was the lack of direction. He was just doing what he felt Jason would do. And he did, he did in all fairness, a pretty decent job in some aspects. But I just felt like some t some of the scenes in the movie I just felt were a bit too comic and just not menacing enough and just that slow thing coming down or, you know, just things like that, I just felt like it was just a bit meh. The rest of the cast were easily forgettable, just there for the body counts, not memorable in the slightest. Uh, even the death scenes, oh my god, the death scenes were off screen, edited. Uh, non-original, apart from two death scenes which I feel were actually pretty decent, which is the guitar death and the actual uh, Jason punching a guy's head off and rolling into a bin. That's about it. There's nothing else apart from that in terms of the death scenes. Everything else was edited, chopped to bits, non-violent pretty much, or looked, you know, it just looked violent, you know, uh, it just... Again, the locations were good in the actual death scenes and Jason was busting through doors doing some cool our shit but that's about it there was nothing really we haven't seen before there's nothing really daring or new and I just I felt his motivation this time around was a bit lackluster. The Friday 13 part 7 Jason Takes Manhattan was a boring lazy movie uh, the production value was pretty decent I have to give it that the cinematography was not too bad in some places Jason's character was not on top of his game I felt he was not menacing characters unrelatable uh, forgettable generic death scenes just Boring, uh, off-screen edited, you know, apart from one or two deaths, that's about it. Um, 
you know, the movie was just boring and that's a deep shame considering it's Jason Takes Manhattan. I did not have fun with this movie, I would not watch this movie again. I was struggling to get through it. Bad, bad movie, not really happy. I think this is where a starting point of the actual Jason movies decided to go really sour and rotten. So this has been Friday the 13th Part 7 Jason Takes Manhattan with you. Hope you're watching this video. What did you think of the movie? Do you think it was good? Do you think it was bad? Which, yeah, pretty much is. Let us know your pins, comment down below. So in the meantime, I'm Jeffrey Mewell from Game TV, signing out.